Oh, my guest today is Bob Malden, who is host of Expedition Texas, the TV show, and also author of the book, Expedition Texas. Welcome, Bob. Hi, John. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, um, you're an old radio guy like I am, and and uh, paths uh, cross at the at the, the radio station, KWJB, The B, and KMU. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're celebrating the 60th year of both KMU and KWJB this year, 60 years of broadcasting. I know you don't go back that far, <laughs> but you go back. Only about half of that, surprisingly, and, and it makes me feel old. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, so when KMU uh, had sold the AM license to Canton and it moved there, uh, two gentlemen by the name of Lloyd Shin and Bill Bone, yeah. a convenience store owner and a dentist, mind you, yeah. uh, were the owners of the radio station at that time. And I uh, harassed them until they gave me a job. Uh, I was 15, 16 years old at the time. As soon as I turned 16 and could drive myself to work, they finally gave me a job. And incidentally, I got my very first job in radio because I was the only person in the building at the time. I had stopped by and was visiting with the GM at the time, a man by the name of Bill Pirtle, who has uh, since passed away. Um, and and I was there and I was, uh, I was asking for a job yet again, as I had done many times in the past. And they had just installed their new computers up front for the traffic and billing uh, office. Yeah. And he couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And so I, uh, he said, can, can you figure out what's, what the problem with this computer is? And I looked behind it and then I looked down at the, uh, the power strip behind it and it wasn't plugged in. <laughs> so I plugged it in and hence got a job in radio. <laughs> great, great story. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was in radio from the time I was 16 until about 10 or 11 years ago when, when things in, in as far as East Texas radio kind of dried yeah. up and I decided to, to pursue other avenues, which led me into TV and then subsequently Expedition Texas. Yeah. Well, we still have an occasional computer problem, so I know who to call now. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever need it plugged in or powered up, yeah. you know who to call, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> Expedition Texas uh, TV show you've been doing for how long? Uh, we are in our 12th year at the moment. So we're wow. when this fall, when we come on the air, it will be 12 years we've been doing this. Wow, wow, wow. You're, you're uh, poking around uh, ghost towns and uh, oh, yeah. obscure places around Texas. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, well, Expedition Texas and your motivation behind it. Well, I think we've all driven by that old abandoned building or driven through a ghost town and thought, man, if these walls could talk. <laughs> And with Expedition Texas, they do. Um, yeah. That's the whole point behind the show is we like to take the viewers places they wouldn't otherwise be able to go. And not just for the point of urban exploration, which is kind of a big thing online if you follow YouTube channels and things yeah. like that, where they go explore abandoned buildings. We wanted to do that, but we also wanted to take it beyond that. And we wanted to focus on the story of these places. I mean, everyone knows the history of the Alamo, but what about the other Spanish missions that were located around San Antonio? You know, yeah. there are places like this all over our great state, and we could literally do this for decades to come and never run out of subject matter because yeah. lost history is always all around us in Texas and all over the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you have, um, compile some of those stories in a written form in your book, Expedition Texas, uh, which I happen to have right here. So ah, <laughs> there it is. Tales from the Road right yeah. there. Um, uh, tell me, you know, I've, I've, it's a great read, by the way. I recommend it. It's, uh, you've got various various stories in here. One here on the Baker Hotel. Oh, which yeah. Has a, yeah. Quite a past in Dallas. Oh, yeah. Uh, any, any little insights you want to give us on the Baker Hotel? Well, uh, you know, a lot of the stories in the book come from kind of behind the scenes information. So, you know, we have about 22 minutes or so in the TV show where we're able to kind of tell the story and we have to condense these things into the form of a, of, you know, broadcast media, which is very, yeah. you know, say little with the, say as, say as much as you can with fewer words. And, and so with the book, we were able to tell kind of the full story and kind of the, the motivation for why we went to some of these places and the Baker hotel had so many stories that we weren't able to show in the two, it took us two episodes to tell that story. And we weren't able to tell all of the stories about that place while we were there, but that place has, 
so much history and so yeah. much going on. And it's one of the places that we talk about in the book that's making a comeback. So by 2027 or so, they tell me, you might be able to book a stay in the Baker Hotel, the same hotel that Judy Garland and Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys all had some kind of uh, part of. And, and this story of mineral wells and that healing water there beneath the surface of that great town. Yeah. And, and you know, we've, we've been to mineral wells so many times on Expedition Texas, but by far our favorite was that historic, magnificent, huge hotel. Interesting, interesting. Well, you know, that's, that's the hotel, as I remember, where H.L. Hunt and Dad Joyner wound up, you know, making a deal that did not benefit Dad Joyner <laughs> and uh, <laughs> made H.L. Uh, Hunt a very rich man. Yeah, uh, there are so many stories that and the business deals, the, the, the stays. I mean, in fact, there was a there was a, a scene in our episode of Expedition Texas where I'm uh, I'm led to a certain area of the room. I think they meant to do this. Yeah. Uh, in, in what was Mr. Baker's suite in the hotel. Wow. They had already shown me his prohibition area, uh, our prohibition era secret storage cabinet for his liquor. And uh, after that, we <laughs> wandered in by the fireplace and they said, this very spot where you're standing now, dramatic pause, yeah. was where they found him dead. And I took a spot to step back immediately. Uh, but, but there are so many stories in the hotel. Uh, yeah. And, you know, of course, ghost stories come with anything that we do on Expedition Texas. But our show is about the history, the stories that actually took place there that we can tell you and relive with you. Well, well, really, really, really cool, Bob. And uh, I know you got one on the Atlas Missile Silo. Uh, which Are is you familiar with the Atlas Missile Program? Well, yes, I am. In fact, I've been yeah. down into one of the silos. It Have wasn't you? Okay. It, it wasn't this one. It was one up in the Midwest. And it's it's a it's a really strange feeling to be down there. This one had a red seat, and uh, they would, of course, do drill, actual well, drills to where they go, unlock the box, get the key, you know. And yeah. what a weird feeling to know that a guy could push a button and with the president's code, and you could wipe out a lot of people. Yeah, yes. And, and by the time we went, uh, we were in a, a hollow shell of one of these places where you know, the old control room table used to sit and yeah. uh, down into the actual silo itself. And the gentleman that showed us the one near Lawn, Texas, where we went, he had lowered a, a small uh, Bassmaster boat down into the silo as that. the groundwater was filling. And he would go and he would uh, manage his way down and, and sit in this boat alone in this cavernous place where the, where the echo goes on forever. Yeah. And sit by himself sometime. And I thought, man, what a place to reflect. 18 stories beneath the Earth's surface by yourself in this just big hollowed out hole in the ground. And uh, but, you know, again, some behind the scenes uh, story on that all included in the book. And this this book kind of gives you the, the story behind the story, the things that we didn't have time to tell on TV. And there's plenty about this yeah. because you drive across this hill and there's a door standing up in a, in a uh, concrete encasing uh, yeah. above the ground. And that's the only way you'll know there's something there potentially below the surface. And we got to go there. Oh, oh, it's uh, that's an eerie feeling. I know and <laughs> that, that's a good story in here. Uh, you also talk about the Amarillo train station. And is sure. there any, any other highlights you would like to pass along about the book? Uh, well, I, I think one of the things that this my favorite to tell is kind of the origin story of the show, um, because, uh, you know, it started off where I thought, well, I kind of, uh, you know, I've kind of done everything I wanted to do in radio. And I wanted to kind of do this thing where we tell stories of people in East Texas or whatever. Yeah. And I yeah. and, and the more I thought about that idea, I thought, well, people have already done that. That's already been done. Uh, you know, Bob Phillips does it with Texas Country Reporter all over the state. Right. Uh, that's been done very, very well by great people who've already told these kinds of stories. And, you know, here in East Texas, we have Joan Hallmark, who was doing the same thing on KLTV7. And I thought, you know, that's already been done. And so I sort of went back to the drawing board. And it was one day I was on a hike with my kids. And we, we followed this creek to the old spillway of Bellwood Lake and Tyler, which not only was the source of water up until 1953 in the city yeah. of Tyler, but it was also 
the recreational, like it was the lake in Tyler. And yeah. we stumbled upon a closed off area that the city had barricaded decades before where there were these old WPA stone fire pits and picnic tables and all this stuff. Yeah. And it was all buried under just years and years of debris, trees falling down and things like that. And uh, on the hike back, the whole way back, I kept thinking, man, wouldn't it be great to go and find places like that, abandoned, lost history, which that was a minor, yeah. minor piece of history compared to some of the other stories we told, yeah. and tell these kinds of stories and take people to these places they wouldn't otherwise be able to see. Yeah. And that's what became the mission. That's what became the idea behind Expedition Texas is to tell these stories of lost history and take the viewers places they otherwise wouldn't be able to see. And that's what set us apart. That's why we're able now to be on beside Bob Phillips and Texas Country Reporters, because we're doing that type of show. We're telling a type of story that nobody's told before on yeah. TV. And I'm very excited about still to this day what we do with Expedition Texas. Very cool, Bob. Very cool. So how, how can people find your book? Well, uh, I, I, I've been told to say by the publisher that it's available anywhere you buy books, which includes okay. all Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all those places. Uh, a lot of retailers are carrying it in the stores now, which is kind of exciting to wander through the book aisle and see the book on the shelf there. But if you don't find it in your local retailer, they can get it. Arcadia Publishing and History Press, they have book, books available with any uh any book distributor that a uh, book retailer that you uh, can think of out there, they can yeah. get the book for you. Uh, and if you can't find it there, you can get it online. Uh, and in, in, we do have a limited quantity that we, uh, that we purchased to put into our store uh, where we can do autograph copies. If anybody wants one personalized, we can do that, but that's but again, online. You can get, you can, yes. And you can get them anywhere. Okay. You can visit expedition, Texas dot TV. Uh, you can either get the books right there from us or, uh, any of those other retailers, Amazon, of course, Barnes and Noble, any of the book okay. retailers you can think of out there. And that's Expedition Texas dot TV. TV. Okay. Yeah. We All have right. one of those funny TV uh, exp uh, ex extensions on our website. So, yeah, we're yeah. Expedition Texas dot TV. So it's easy to remember. Hey, well, uh, good luck to you. I appreciate what you're doing. And we old radio guys got to stick together. So, <laughs> Yeah, John. Well, thank you. And thanks for uh, just to everybody out there who, uh, you know, helped me share the first 30 years of my career uh, doing radio. And, and I'm very excited about what's to come. But thanks for letting me uh, come back on here and, and talk to some of my friends in Canton and Mineola and all around uh, about what we're doing now. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, we're glad to do it, and uh, we'll have to have you back. Appreciate you helping celebrate uh, 60 years of broadcasting for KMU and KWJB. KWJB AM is the original KMU AM, so yeah. that's how it all goes together. And right. uh, yeah. we'll have to have to have you on, on again. Uh, yeah, as we we keep we keep plugging. So and we are back in the archives. I have some of those first uh, first air checks from back in the day, and they're not very good. Oh, I'd love to hear him, though. I'd love to hear him. <laughs> well, we are we are Nielsen rated number one in our awesome. listening area, so that's that's pretty cool. We're proud of that. That's amazing. Yeah. Good luck to you, Bob. Thank you, sir.